Good morning. Welcome to our service again. And we are so happy that you are here with us, especially our first service for 2023. Those of you who are watching us on Facebook, we are very happy that you can join us at this moment. And um, it is our prayer and our desire that you will have a blessed new year, a blessed 2023. Our prayer is, is that may the light of this new year shine brightly on your life, which opens the door to everlasting peace and happiness, good health and prosperity that brings joy throughout the new year. How we give God thanks. Let's bow our heads and ask God's blessing upon his word and also ask him to bless each person that is under the sound of my voice at this moment. Father, we are so thankful for all that you have done. We thank you, Father, that you are great, that you are mighty, that you are a God who saves, that you are a God who loves us, that you are a God who, who sent your only begotten son, Jesus, to die for us. We celebrated that when we celebrated Christmas. And now, Lord, as we start this new year, we ask your blessing upon each one of us, especially, oh, Father, this congregation of Great International Baptist Church. Thank you, Father, for what you have done for us during the past year. And Lord, we ask that you will continue to provide for every need that we have, that you will give us, oh Father, your word that we can hold on to, knowing that you are leading us. And also, Lord, we pray that you will help us, that we will be faithful in reminding and to invite others to join us for service as well. Thank you for what you have done and all that you are going to do, and we love you. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen. All right. Well, today we are going to be looking at living this year for all its worth. One more time. Living this year for all its worth. Well, if you have your Bible, I'm going to invite you to open it, please, at Psalm 119. Psalm 119, and we are going to read from verse 1 through 6. Psalm 119, and we are going to read from verse 1 through 6. If you don't have your Bible, you can follow us on the screen. And it says this, Blessed are those whose way, ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. And then it says, blessed are those who keep his status and seek him with all their heart. You know why? Because they do no wrong, but follow his ways. You have laid down precepts that are to be fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decree. Then I not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. Wow, what a psalm. So let's look at this psalm now, these, these six verses, as we're thinking about living this year for all its worth. Living this year of all its worth means walking with the Lord every day. Not only when it feels like it, not only when we are in trouble and we, we have to look for God's help. No, we have to walk with God every day. As we listen to what Psalm 119, verse 1 through 6 says, do you know anyone like, like that? Someone who is obeying God like that? Well, I know someone, and his name is Jesus. You see, he came and he lived this kind of life on this earth to leave us an example to allow us to know that we too can enjoy life like that. We too can obey God and do these things. 
this year as we make our plans and promises to live for God, expect God to change your life. Our scripture tells us that blessed are those, blessed are those that are whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord, who keep his purpose and seek him with all their heart. You see, these are the things we got to remember. That God said he will take care of us. He will bless us. But the condition is that we need to allow him to be ruled upon our lives as well. It's wonderful to remember, making New Year's resolution was a given for just about everyone I knew. It was a time of beginning again. It was a time of refuse of refocus our sight. It was a time for new hope in the new year. I remember at the turn of every new year, my father led the, the, the paraga and, and, and walk and walk with the essence, you know, the scent, the essence smoke through the house as a symbol of looking for a, a prosperous year ahead. Not sure just how significant that was, but I am sure that that was setting a plan in place. His plan was that he wanted for great things to happen for the family. So it was a tradition that he would follow, something that he had kept from, um, from generation to generation as it came down. But setting plans is very much. A good thing. God plans and purpose eternal matters, and He made us in His image. So we are creatures with the ability to look into the future and imagine and envision. We must use this gift to the glory of God. In the late 1980s, um, I read about Stephen Conway who wrote a best-selling book entitled Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The book is, is the result of hundreds of hours of study and observation. But interestingly, interestingly enough, but not surprisingly, his discoveries of truth about life sound a lot like what we read in the scripture. You see, he said, before we can become mature, we must accept that we have the power to choose and that we are ultimately responsible for our choices. I'm going to repeat it again. He said, before we mature, we must accept that we have the power to choose and that we are ultimately responsible for our choices. You see, that is why we will also have to face the consequences of our choices. You see, just like we read in Genesis chapter 2 and 3, where God allowed Adam and Eve to face the serpent. He was the liar, and they needed to decide whose words they would trust because God told them, I placed you in the garden and you can eat from every tree that is in the garden except from that tree there, the tree of knowledge, the tree that will, that is against the law to touch. But then here come the serpent. And he said, on God, because he is just don't want you to be as smart as he is. He doesn't want you to know all that he knows. He doesn't want you to be like him. This is why he forbidden you all to do that. Giving them choice. You see, now 
in you as the individual so that others can be jewel to me. You see, things, these are all important things. So it reach to the point now for me to ask you this question. As we are looking, um, uh, as we are looking at 2023, are you planning to live this year for all its worth? Are you planning to live this year for all its worth? Or you living for what you honestly believe is worth dying for? Are you living for what you honestly believe is worth dying for? Listen, we need to take an inventory of our lives, especially as we decided that we are going to make a New Year resolution. New Year resolution is not only to do with diet. It is not only to do with going to bed on time. It was, it, it's not only to be of what I want to make financially during the year. It is not only how I want to live my life uh, with my neighbors. No, it has to do with me and what is going to happen to me after I leave. As something of worth, you see, something worth dying for. God gives us the time and opportunity to do just that. He gave us the instruction in his word that show us how to live for what is truly worth dying for. And he gives us the strength through his Holy Spirit and the fellowship of others, our brothers and sisters in Christ, to experience just such a wonderful life. As, as a Christian, I know that living for what it's worth dying for is as simple as walking with the Lord every day. It's not as complex as we think. Each day that we do this, we live a day that is worth dying for. Listen, that is why Paul says, for me to live is gain, but to die is it's, it's far better. Why? Because he knows that he is leaving plenty behind. Number two, he knows where he is going. He is going to be to meet his Lord and Savior. And that he is going to, 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 to be able to, to really uh, be able to, to, to show to the world that God is the one who has this plan and purpose for him. What could be greater than serving Jesus? What could be greater than serving Jesus? What could be greater than helping someone else get to heaven? What could be more amazing than to speak to and hear from the creator of the universe himself? You see, you see, what could be greater than serving Jesus? If you serve a brother or sister or anyone in Jesus' name, you serve the Lord Jesus himself. You see, that is why it is great in serving Jesus. What could be greater than helping someone else get to heaven? Well, Sharing your salvation experience with someone so that they too can come to know Jesus as Savior, you will do just that. Remember, I didn't say that you need to be able to know the Bible from cover to cover to be able to answer every question. No, when you share your faith, it is only to share with people what God has done for me. You see, it is like this. This is who I was. And this is who I am today, and this is the reason why. You see, give them a testimony of what God has done for you. What could be more amazing than to speak to and hear from the creator of the universe himself? Well, when we read the scripture and pray regularly, we are doing just that. We are communicating. We are building a relationship with the Lord. 
And when we build a relationship with him, remember, he calls us his children. He calls us his son. He calls us his daughter. And so because of that type of relationship we have with him, we draw us closer to him and make us want to obey what he says in his word for us to do. Loving God and loving one another, walking in Christ according to his word. This is the greatest life that you can live. There is no other life that is bigger than that. So, 2022 is about to be filed away in the archive of some. Matter of fact, we can say because this is the second Sunday already. So we can say it is already in the archive of some. But here comes 2023, a clean slate, a new page, a new year, something, a new canvas that we can either write, draw, live, you see, because it is a new year for us to do what we, we want to do for the Lord. Just to reflect, God has given us 31,536,000 seconds to spend the past year. 31,536,000 seconds to spend the past year. How have you spent it? How have you spent it? Would you die for what you lived for in the past year? Would you die for it? You gave a year of your life for whatever you did. This year ahead, some may not live to see the end of it. If the Lord returns, none of us will see the end of 2023. If he returns in 2023. That is why we need to plan. That is why we need to choose right. That is why we need to make a commitment to the Lord. You see, today there, there may be someone here in the service who is not ready to meet the Lord. Or maybe you are a believer, but need to rededicate your life to Jesus and resolve to walk with the Lord according to his word, making a new commitment to be faithful to him. Or someone has been trying to walk in their own way and has tasted the, the fruit of sin and found out that that life was biting back hard. You see, so they are now in a situation where they need Jesus. Well, I am encouraging you to listen to God. Pay attention to the plan he provided for us. Let me share with you God's plan for our life, the plan for our future. And it is all written for us to see in his word, which is the Bible. The Bible tells us plainly, first of all, that God created everything. God created everything. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You see, that means everything that includes the heavens, everything that is included in the earth, God created it. God made everything you see and a lot that we don't see. He made you and me as well. He created everything. Also in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 to 28, God says, let us make man in our image, man referring to people, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male, female, he created them. Then God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Listen, that is what God said. He created everything for his pleasure. He created everything for our enjoyment. He created everything so that it can remain forever. You see, God created Everything. But that is not the only thing that is part of his plan. You see, that also helps us to understand how he can come about. Because he created everything, he also wants us to remind us where we came from. It's a beautiful beginning. We are designed to be like him. Remember the verse 27, it says that let us create man in our image. We are expected to be walking with the Lord every day, you see, because of the relationship that we have. We are uh, accepted. We are called to be his children. So he wants to remind us where we come from. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 to 7, it says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling aroma, for fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness. Let it not even be named among you as it's fitting for sin. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are no, uh, not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicators, ungodly person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ. And God, and then he says, let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore, do not be partakers of them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Listen, God created everything for us. And then now he is saying, look, this is where you are. You were part of this long list of, of, of all these bad things, you see. And then he says, look, these are not things that should be called in those that now believe. Those who now are my children are not supposed to be part of this. We should be walking in a life that is an example, a pure life. A clean life, an exemplary life. That's what he said, you see. So he reminds us where we came from. God's plan is for us to reflect on where we come from. I'm reflecting, am I reflecting correctly that family value and principles that he gave in his word for me to follow? Am I planning to live this year? For all it's worth, because the list of things that we read a while ago, am I willing to die for that kind of lifestyle? Number three, another thing is that God's plan for our life is God made us and called us to be his children. You see, he created us. He told us what he expects from us. The kind of things that we should not be part of, and then what he says we should be part of. And then he says, I am calling you my children. We are bought at a high price, and now we belong to his family. Every one of us 
the Bible says, has sinned and become separated from God by our own choice. Many have turned away from him. But God's word says in Isaiah 53, 6, that's where he reminds us. He says, all of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He prepared a way, you see, so that we now can be forgiven, so that we now can be able to be cleansed, so that we can be called the children of God. In Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to, to 7, here we see the saddest statement in this one of the saddest statements in the scripture. It says, Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. And the Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the earth, from man to animal to creeping thing and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. Listen, God is just here showing his, his pleasure. He just, remember, he created us for his pleasure. But then man decided to turn around and then their hearts went away. From God, you see, even though we have to be called for us now to be called your children, you see, the man who was designed to be his in, in his image is so corrupted with evil that God is grieved with his creation. And what he decided to do is that no, I'm going to destroy the earth in a flood. An event like this, which we will. We will never see again, but God uses this event to warn us what can happen if we do not turn from our sin. Listen, our plan that we will make has to include God. And when I say it has to include God, it is to be including God the way God intended for him to be included. So in other words, I don't pick up and pick and choose what I want, which part of God I want in my plan, in my life. No. God said, I want all or not. You see, the Bible says we can serve both. We can follow both paths. We have to choose one because all we will honor one and reject the other, and usually we reject the one who seems to be the hardest. You see, and that is when we start to think the way we have to follow God. But yet, we can be reminded that the thing is promises when we decide that God is part of the plan and purpose that I choose for 2023. But remember. God realized that, hey, I created everything. You see, God said, I created everything. And then he said that, uh, that, that he, then, then he reminded us of where we came from. You see, then he said, okay, I will prepare a way so that they now can come and then be, be, be forgiven and then I can call them my children. But then God also tells us, Number four, that he is the creator of all, and that he has the power also to destroy it all. See? So I can't blame you for causing other things. You see, I either have to give God all or none. You see, look what he says here in 2 Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3, I'm going to read from verse 3. It says, Know this first of all, 
that in the last days mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the father fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning of creation. For when they mount in this, it escaped their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago, and the earth was formed out of the water and by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed, being flooded with water. But the present heavens and earth by his word are being reserved for fire. And kept for the day of judgment and destruction for ungodly men. But do not let this one act escape your notice. Beloved, what the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, and some count slowness, but his is patient towards you. Not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the element will be destroyed with intense heat, and the earth and its work will be burned up. Since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, what sort of people ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness, looking for what, for, looking for and hating to the coming of the day of God, on the account of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning and the elements will melt with intense heat. Listen. Listen, God created it all, and we can destroy it all. He said he will destroy it all. But there is hope. You see, many decided that they want to walk with them because since the day they said he people are preaching and, and saying that the Lord is coming, and so far we haven't come yet. Listen, if he come, would you have gone with it? Are you living your life in a way that you are prepared? Are you planning to be prepared so that when he comes, you can go with it? That's the question we need to ask ourselves. You see, he, we know everything that is there. We are aware of his plan. And that is what we are talking about today. You see, we are, I'm showing you what God has done so far for us. You see, but it, the choice is ours. We have to decide of it. God left us plenty of evidence for warning through the great flood that he sees to destroy the, that, that he used to destroy the earth. You see, do you know that everywhere we go, there is evidence that, that of that great flood and evidence of God's wrath against sin? God will judge all sin. He must do it because he is holy. That is why he said, look, if you claim to be my child, be ye holy. Holy. As we saw already earlier, when Paul said, be ye imitators, be ye followers of Christ, just like he is. He is holy. It is our unbelief and sin that blinds our heart and mind from God. It is the word of God preached that has the power to open blind eyes, to see the light of God's truth. And to come to Jesus Christ in faith and obedience and be saved. You see, it is again another choice. God said, Look, I provided a way of escape. 
I send Jesus to die on the cross for you today so that you can trust him as your Lord and Savior, that you can accept that gift that I gave you at Christmas. Jesus born, and he lived a life to live an example for us. And then he suffered. He took all the power punishment upon him. So today we can accept that gift that God gives us. You see, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 21 and 25, he says, for since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God. God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, Jews are apt for time, and Greeks seek for wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. To Jews a stumbling block, and to Gentile foolishness. But to those who are the cause, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Also in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, we read in verse 3 to 6, it says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the mind of the unbelieving, that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not preach, for we do not preach um, ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord, and ourselves as your bound servants for Jesus' sake. For the God who said, Light shall shine out of darkness is the one who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. Listen, God prepared a way. We, we created everything. Everything was good. But we as men, we spoil it. We make a wrong choice. We decided to follow the lies of our enemies. And now God said, here is again second chance. I am giving you Jesus. You see, who I send my only begotten son for you to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And as you make your plan for 2023, make sure that you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Make sure that God's plan, you see, are for you and I to live our life to reflect his love, to reflect who he is, so others can see and glorify him. And then he said, you will have a successful life, a successful life, a life worth dying for, living this year for all it worth. God's word says in Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, so faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Jesus said, the word of God is like a seed sown in our hearts. If our hearts are good and honest, that seed grow up and bears much fruit. If our hearts are hard and shallow, are full of worldly cares and worries, and then that word will not produce its fruits in us. Therefore, the question is, do you believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, the gift that God sent us so that we can be sure that when we accept that gift, we are God's children? Do you know him as your Lord and Savior, your personal Lord and Savior. Someone wants, somewhere I read it says that God has no grandchildren. 
His enemies must kill them. So we cannot depend on the salvation and the pure love of father, mother, somebody else who cares. No, it is a personal thing. And do you realize that he gave his life for you to pay for your sins through his death? Look, Jesus thought we were worthy dying. He thought that. That's why he came. So that's why he came. And then his death was to give us eternal life. That's why Jesus told his disciples in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20, he said, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. You see? And that's what they did in Acts chapter 2. We read the first thing the disciples did when the Holy Spirit came on them was to make disciples. If they baptized them and teach them to obey Jesus' command. Faithful Christians have been doing that ever since. Listen, our lives are not only for ourselves, but so that others can see Christ through us. How about you? How about you? Are you planning to live this year in God's will? You see? Are you planning to live this year in God's will? Father, open our eyes. Open our minds. Help us to understand. Put finger on things that we have to give to you. And help us to shine bright for you in 2023. Father, help us as we make our New Year resolution, as we make plans, as we look at the purpose of which we live. Help us, oh God. To put your plan and purpose in the center of it all. And so, Lord, that we can live a life worth living for, a life worth dying for. So that, Lord, yes, whatever we do, you will receive the glory, you will be glorified, and others will see you through us. And come to know you as Lord and Savior as well. Help us to be faithful. Help us to be committed. Help us to do what's right. And so, Father, that we can then live our lives to honor and glorify you. Thank you again. And we love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Well, we would like to thank you for taking the time to listen to today's sermon. We invite you to join us again next Sunday at the same time. If you would like to attend our Sunday worship service at 11 a.m. on Zoom, please contact us at allbecauseofgrace at gmail.com and we will send you the Zoom invite. We would love the opportunity to share Christ with you and to help you grow in His Word. So please contact us at allbecauseofgrace at gmail.com and let us know how we can pray for you and how we can help you grow in His Word. Our contact information is on the screen. You can also reach us by phone or by WhatsApp or even by mail. So all our information are there. Please help. If you need some um, spiritual help, feel free to join us, to call us. And again, I would like to encourage you who are here with us to invite others to do just what you have done. Join us to service and help us spread God's word throughout the world 
as we go along and live and waiting for his return. Today, we would like to thank you for everything. And how we, our prayer is that the Lord bless you and that the Lord keep you, that the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. And that the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace throughout this new week that is ahead of us. God bless you. We love you. God bless you.